Well, hello there. So today we're going to be talking about hashing and why hashing, why would you do it? Why is it somehow faster? And I'm going to start by actually showing you why it's faster and talking about the types of trade-offs you have to make when it comes to uh, speed in a computer system. So you remember this diagram from uh, the previous session where we're talking about term listing and hashing. So we're going to go through now and talk about the performance of uh, hashing. Um, what I've done is I've created uh, some sample files. So I've created a samples folder. And this one, I'm going to talk around the hashing benefits here. So within my project, I've created another project. Um, and this is just a simple test application. And all we're doing here really is just testing out uh, different scenarios um, around how we can manage data. Now, I'm purely talking about in memory here because um we're talking about key value store we're just talking about in memory search speed once you've loaded all the data so we're just going to look at in memory comparisons today rather than on disk comparisons we'll cover that in another session um but what i'm going to start by doing is i'm going to start with a buffer of 65,000 items in memory um of a particular length um and these are some calculations that show you just how big they, they get pretty quickly um all I'm going to do though is I'm going to go for 32 characters um, plus an additional null terminator um, and I'm going to store those, generate the characters randomly and store them in memory against a particular key. Okay, so this first thing here is storing them un unsorted. So this is just using an array, so pretty straightforward. So um, <clears throat> what this is, this is just me caching one of the um values at you know not quite at random but about three quarters of the way along um the number of items i'm storing and that's just to pick an item out that we can then later on test the retrieval speed against okay um so in order to test the retrieval speed i need to know the key in order to know the key i've got to save it when i've allocated it so i'm going to do that in this loop not the you know highest performance code in the world but what i'm doing here this is quite a handy function that we'll be using uh, when it comes to doing lots of the performance tests as well. This is um, some kind of C++11 um, chrono library. So this uh, allows you to do very accurate timing down to the nanosecond if your system supports it. What I'm doing here is I'm looping through for all the items in my store. I'm allocating a new buffer in memory, randomly generating some characters for that buffer. And then that becomes um, a particular value that I'm storing in memory. So this is the equivalent of our key. You know, this is it's like a random key, um, and we're storing the key in in the list. So no values against it, just the keys itself, because we're interested in pulling the speed of finding that key and fetching that key. So what I'm doing here is allocating them in my array, and I'm logging how long that uh, allocation takes and then print that out to screen. Um, so let's try and run that and see what that does. So uh, let me just recompile that. I'm not sure when I last recompiled it. Uh, see what. Yeah, that's built. Okay, so we see storage is about 73 milliseconds in memory. So it's not the most efficient thing in the world because I'm I'm randomly allocating them as well as storing them, whereas normally in a database you just store what you've been given by the client, but I'm randomly allocating them as well. The fact that the allocations in there doesn't matter because I'm allocating the same way throughout these examples. So it'll be skewed, sure, but it won't be skewed by as much as we think. Plus I'm really bothered about measuring retrieval time. So we're now storing it. What we need to do now, oops, do that every time. What we need to do now is retrieve it by key name. So what I mean by key name is somewhere in this big list of keys is the key we're interested in. We've got to go and find it uh, because we can't find the key. Then we can't find the value associated with that key. Now, obviously, we've just got an array of keys, but the procedure is the same. So what we do here is quite a straightforward, naive loop. So this is just, you know, it's a simple array. So it's not indexed. There's no trees involved. So it's, um, you know, ON complexity. So we're basically going through, and if the value is the same as the one that we cached before, then we um, return that index, um, and we measure the time taken 
from start to finish and we print out uh, the value at zero the value at one that's just for me making sure that my code is working <laughs> and then we um print out the uh the index that we found and the time it's taken in the different ways of measuring that time so let's just run that again there we go so it's done the um store in memory quicker this time and these are the examples of the you know keys that we're generating and it's found this key at index 48751 um and that took seven milliseconds so key retrieval seven milliseconds now that might seem quite fast but for key value store that's incredibly slow as you'll see why in a bit so that's what we're currently doing but let's say well if we had a magical way of figuring out exactly which index that thing was stored at then um would that be any quicker like could we do something that we know about the key value to determine the index um, and this is really where hash tables come in. So what we're going to do now is look at retrieving um, the key by known index. So, and this really is because we know the index it's at, just pull it back. How long does that retrieval um, take? Now this would be ridiculously quick. The reason why I'm doing this is because this shows just how fast in memory can be if you know exactly where it is in memory. So this is like the, my computer's raw retrieval speed, if you like. And if we run through that, you see that this is obviously zero milliseconds. But if you look down, it's two microseconds or 2,132 nanoseconds. So that is the absolute maximum speed if you knew exactly where that key was in memory that you could get to. So really what we want to do is we want to come up with a mechanism that is much better than this. So better than seven milliseconds, but it will never, it will never beat that because you just can't get better than just fetching it from memory. Okay. So we need a mechanism that can get near to this. Um, as much as possible now you might be thinking well perhaps maybe we can get three quarters of the way there yeah there's different ways of doing it so here's a question um fetch by index much more efficient um you know one two and sixty third of the time now if we hash the name and use this hash value as the index could we go faster um <clears throat> the answer is yes however there is a problem with hashing now um the thing with hashing is it's a mathematical function so if your keys are very short anyway like one character there's probably no point in hashing them because there'll be so so few of them but if your key space is very large then the hash operation um although it has to step all the way through um the key letters once um it's then a number but then comparing that number against existing hashes in a table is much, much quicker than comparing two strings character by character each time. So yeah, it, the, the calculation of the hash could take longer, but it's unlikely. But if it did, um, it means that, you know, keys, are, there's not many keys, or key names are short, um, so which means it'll be slower than, um, than three. It means it will be slower than by name, the thank. Uh, old English today. So, okay, let's use a hash mechanism. Now, rather than write my own, because I'm not going to be better than the people who've been working on C++ for the last 20 years, what I've done is I've pulled in a particular library for this. So, um, in my key value store, what I have here is an unordered map. Now, you might be thinking, well, hang on a minute, don't I want an ordered map so I can find the exact position? Well, yeah, but what it's actually doing is it's taking your unordered value, it's hashing it, and then storing that hash in a way where it can index very, very quickly. So actually what we're doing here is we're storing a, a hash table in memory. So it'll calculate the hashes for you. You don't have to know the hashes. You just say, here's my key, go store something against it, or here's my key, give me the thing that's stored against it, okay? So we're doing the same thing here, we're allocating random keys um, and then we're creating a string for that and then we're inserting the key and the value because we can do a value now. Now my value, because I didn't want to skew the results, I've just called it random value, which is wibble. If you're uh, familiar with British comedy, you'll understand the significance of that. Then what I'm doing there is if I found the chosen uh, index, I'm storing, storing the key for that index. Then I'm printing out the times, okay? And spoiler alert. Um, so if I run this again, with all three of those things in there, you'll look at, so we're comparing storage. We've just done storage at the moment. 
So starring took 71 milliseconds um, just by starring it in memory in an array. So storage time is like three times the amount of time. But that kind of makes sense, right? Because we're not just storing a value in a memory area, we're hashing it and then storing it. So it kind of makes sense. It's only three times slower. But three times slower, 221 milliseconds eek, that's insane. But if you think about it, that's 221 milliseconds for 65,000. So if you divide that by 65,000, you're in the kind of nanosecond, you're like three nanosecond range or something, three or four nanoseconds. That's infinitely better. Um, so it's still blindingly fast for an individual key. That's great. So we're storing it. But what about um, retrieval time? Well, as luck would have it, I've written that code as well. So if we now build that, <coughs> um, then what we're doing here basically is we're saying, go find me my chosen string. So the key I'm interested in. Um, <coughs> and then give me the first pair that you've part of the pair you've stored and the second part of the pair you stored. Don't forget we're storing key value pairs here. So we're pulling back effectively the retrieved key and the retrieved value and then we're printing them out. Okay. Um so now that's built. I'm gonna run it again. And here we see that the raw performance that we could mass maximum get uh oh that's interesting. I've never had it beaten it before. <laughs> <coughs> Normally it is a bit slower. Let's run that again. It's the first time I've ever had it beat in it. Now oh, there we go. This is more likely the result you're going to get. So you'll see that you know storage uh, and retrieval by index and array is still blazingly fast. And this actually is not far off it. Rather than be three quarters of the time towards it. Um, so here we were kind of hoping to get in the kind of two millisecond area. We're actually in the two microsecond area. We're a thousand times faster than we thought. So this is as damned as near it as close to array index um, retrieval as you're going to get while still getting the benefits of hashing. So, um, you know, this is a very efficient way of storing and retrieving data, which is why we're going to now implement that in our database. Sure, it gives us a storage time problem, um, but, you know, there's different ways around that particular problem. So, for example, you could just write the raw value into memory and retreat, you know, return in zero milliseconds. Um, well, like three microseconds or whatever it is anyway. Um, and then you could compute the hash afterwards and store it, but then you'd be eventually consistent. So if you're really bothered about it, you could do that. Um, whereas I think for the value you're getting in hashing it and retrieval speed, the storage speed hit is worth taking. And you can do other things in the storage speeds, for example, bunch up keys that you're storing to make that more efficient. So this is effectively the fundamental problem with databases is that the more functionality you add, the slower they go, but the more valuable they are. So there's always this tension between, OK, do I add that functionality in for everybody? at the risk of you know alienating the people that need extreme performance um, for some of these things. So it's always a balancing act. And when we design this database, we're gonna try and do as much as possible to enable you to tweak these dials however you need them for your implementation. But as we've shown today, you know, it, there is, it's very efficient um, storing as hashes. So what we're gonna do, um, we're gonna implement hashing. So we're going to use hash maps interfaces in memory and we're going to go and implement that now. Looking forward to the next video. Please don't forget, hit subscribe.